Uh, we're in a series called World Changers, and um, I'm trying to talk about the difference in believing, uh, the difference in being a believer of Jesus and a real follower of Jesus. He's called us to be real followers. And um, I want to share a passage of scripture, and, and, and I thought about this. This is a way of getting your heart rate up. That's the goal of this beginning uh, scripture. Several months ago, I went to um, CrossFit. And I went several months ago, I went one time, and there's a reason that I didn't go back. Anybody with me? Um, respect your local CrossFit people, because they're beast mode, all right? And apparently they don't feel pain like I do, apparently, all right? But um, so I go there, and their first deal was, we're going to go run. And I'm like, run? What I come here for? I didn't think we had to run. I'm like, we're getting our heart rate up. It's important. To, so maybe this scripture will get you a little excited. It's important to where we're going to go. One of my favorite scriptures and before we pray, here's what it says. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, this is 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he's a new creation, anyone, doesn't matter who you are, what your past is, you're a whole new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. God doesn't turn you into a better version of your old self. You're a whole new self, and man, it's so important we understand this. Then it says in verse 20, so in this new life, these new people that we become, um, we're Christ's ambassadors, as though God is making his appeal through us. God's actually, actually chosen us to become world changers. It's just incredible. Um, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Would you pray with me? Father God, first I pray for all right now whose hearts are um, perhaps troubled, or there's new people here, and they're not at peace or comfortable. Hey, man, welcome home. God loves you. He's thrilled you're here. We're thrilled you're here. We're here for you. And, uh, and this is a great place to come and heal and grow and change and, uh, and make this something you do every week, and it, it'll change your life. And so be at peace right now. We should all be hungry and on the edge of our seats to hear from you, God, and apply your word to our lives. And we believe if we do that, we'll never be the same. And so, God, you speak to us, and we're hungry to grow and change uh, today and one day at a time for the rest of our lives. You speak. May you be lifted up. We pray this in Jesus' name. Let's all agree and say amen. All righty. Hey, I was watching a, uh, a football show. It's new called... 24-7, they take four different college football programs and, and do an hour show on a week, following this program for a week. So um, uh, one of the teams that surprised me, it was probably one of my favorite of the four, uh, was the Arizona Sun Devils. I didn't know anything about them. Uh, their coach is Herm Edwards, who was an NFL commentator and was an ex-NFL uh, coach. And he was in this meeting, and I was on my spinner bike watching this, and he goes, hey, you guys need to understand now, remember, these are kids ages 18 through 22, really, you know, so it's, they're right on the border of being uh, kids and young men. He's like, you guys need to, this isn't just about football. We're here to make you better men. You need to understand, that's what we're about. And to all of you, I want you to understand, especially if you're new, this isn't just about coming to church or playing church. This is about you becoming incredibly new people, people that you never dreamed of, you changing all the way to heaven. It's not even just about learning how all your sins can be washed away and how you get to go to heaven. It's about so much more than that. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And it's about us teaching you how to experience that. I want you to know that that's what this is about. So um, I'm going to just jump right in with where we're going to go today. But it's so important, whether you're a Christian or you're a seeker, what we're going to talk about today is so important to you growing and changing. And if you are a Christian... What th this is essential to you reaching your God potential. So here's our first point, and we got to understand. So when I say this, see if you agree. We're better when we're under the authority of discipline. We're just better when we're under the authority of discipline. Uh, quickly, when I say discipline, I'm referring to structured training uh, to reach our God potential. Uh, when I raise my kids... Uh, I've taught them discipline is doing what you don't want to do. It's doing what you don't want to do so you can do what you do want to do. So maybe you don't, don't want to save money, but you save money so that someday you can buy a house. That's discipline. That's discipline. And we're just better when we're under the authority of discipline. Where that point came from, I was talking to a, a, a family that I love. I've been coming here a long time. And we were talking about how stinking hard it is to eat clean and to stay on the wagon of eating clean. 
And I don't know about you, but I can go in a little spurt and eat clean and lose 20 pounds, and then I gain 25. Is it, is it just me or any of you wrestle with this type of behavior? And it's like, this is so hard. And they were like, I know. And I'm like, I know. I mean, we've been doing this for years, and it doesn't come easy. And it's like, I know. Actually, I found this really doesn't come easy to a whole lot of people. A lot of people, you'd be surprised how hard this is. And then we started talking. We're like, you know, it's exactly the same way with God. This isn't easy. It's hard. It's hard to do the spiritual disciplines. It's hard to be in church every week. It's hard to serve God. It's hard to live for something uh, bigger than yourselves. And and when when we walked away talking about how, man, it's hard in eating and it's hard, I go, but here's all I know. I'm better. I'm just a better person when I'm under the authority of discipline. I'm better when I'm I'm eating with discipline. I'm way better when I'm, I'm doing these spiritual disciplines that help me one day at a time to grow and change. So we're better when they're under the authority of discipline. So we come here, and if we don't, if we've never heard this, we've never been to church, or we've never heard the Bible, we hear these wild things like, here's what the Bible says, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared beforehand for us to do. God's got incredible. Well, that is true, but it's not going to happen without growing in discipline. Or we hear, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for him. You can't even imagine all God wants to do through you. That's true, but it's going to matter how much discipline we have. That's how we're going to experience this. I'm telling you, no matter who you are, God wants to do a whole new thing in your life. All right, But it will come down to us growing in discipline. A win for me this week is that every single one of us leave And God speaks to us about different areas where we need more discipline, and we leave hungry knowing we need to grow in discipline to be at our best and to live the lives that God wants us to live, all right? Now, when I was uh, 23, I was literally dying of alcoholism. So that is undisciplined, all right? I, I have no control over my and I'm dying of alcoholism. I didn't believe in Jesus. I didn't believe in the Bible. I went to AA to try to learn how to stay sober. Uh, by the grace of God, I've been sober since. And, and I didn't believe in any of this, but I got a sponsor and, and I agreed to work 12 steps the best of my ability. And my sponsor, like God, just delivered this man into my life because he just spoke into me. There's a thing called the big book. And he said, Mike, every day of your life, you need to read pages 82 through 88 of the big book. Read it till you know it and live this. This is essential to how you live your life. Now, I didn't know that what I was going to read came from principles right out of the Bible, all right? And I didn't know that one of the founders of AA read with his wife from the Bible every day, and if you go to visit his house in Akron, it's open to the book of James. I didn't know that, all right? But here's what I read. Here's what I saw on pages 82, 3. And I'm telling you, this is so just laid out so well, and all of us would be so much better if we applied this to our life. Here's what it says. On awakening... We should think about the 24 hours ahead. If this is a gift, we should think about what we're going to do. We consider our plans for the day, and before we begin, before you do anything, pray. Now, I love what it says next. I've gotten a kick out of this. Here's what it says. So, before you do anything, pray. We shouldn't be shy on this matter of prayer. There are certain things to be shy about in life. Don't be shy about prayer. And here's what it says. Better men than we are using it constantly. (laughs) You're dying over here of this disease. Way better people than you are using this and found this one. This this prayer thing works pretty good. Don't be shy, all right? Don't be shy with prayer. There you go. Write that down. Don't be shy. Um, And then it says, uh, hey, man, better men than we are using it constantly. It works if we have the proper attitude. You better believe prayer works if you have the proper attitude. And, so we, and then it says you go through today, ask, ask God to direct our thinking, asking it to be divorced from self-pity, dishonest, self-seeking motives. If we have, and that's like principles right from the Bible. If we have troubles, we remind ourselves, thy will be done. Well, that sounds familiar. That's because it's the prayer that Jesus taught us how to pray. Uh, when we have troubles, we, we, we help someone else. Love and tolerance of others is our code. Man, this this sounds familiar. At the end of the day, we review our day. What could we have done better and prepared tomorrow to do the same thing over? And here's how it ends. We alcoholics are undisciplined, so we let 
God discipline us in the simple way we have just outlined. And this is how people that were going to die learn how to get sober, stay sober, and become incredibly productive people and even world changers through spiritual disciplines. Discipline changes everything. We're better when we're under the authority of discipline. That's just a fact. All right, I hope we can all agree on that. We are better. However, there's a huge problem uh, with this idea of discipline. Uh, I don't know if you know what the problem is. I'll tell you what I think the problem is. The problem is I hate discipline. Is it just me? Anybody else? I mean, I hate it. I hate the whole thing about it. Uh, for me, it is right up there uh, with running and, and, and getting a colonoscopy done, all right, and going to the dentist. They all hover for they're in competition for my least favorite things to do in the whole wide world and disciplines right up there now some of us may be wondering you may be wondering what in the world would i want to do this for why would i want to grow in, in discipline it reminds me of one of my favorite movies and favorite scenes from a movie and, and i'm going somewhere with this the movie's called men of honor how many of you have ever seen the movie men of honor less of you than other services other services 50 60 percent Great movie. I, I really mean that. I think it's a fantastic movie. I, I, I would recommend it, and I don't recommend uh, many movies. There's a scene. It's my favorite scene, and, and it leads to another thing. But this, this guy, it's about a Navy diver. It's like, why would anybody want to be a Navy diver? And then this scene, he's, he's challenged. He's like, why would anybody want to be a Navy diver? And here's what he says. The Navy diver is not a fighting man. He is a salvage expert. If it's lost underwater, he finds it. If it's sunk, he brings it up. If it's in the way, he moves it. If he's lucky, he will die young, 200 feet beneath the waves, for that is the closest he will ever get to being a hero. Heck, I don't know why anybody would want to be a Navy diver. And the end of the movie builds to because of honor because of living a, a, a very respectable life and doing something respectable uh, with your life. And discipline's the same way. Why would anybody want to do discipline? Why would I want to do that? And there's an answer that I hope God will speak to you because it's so important we understand this. This is why. This is why it's so important that we leave here hungry to grow in spiritual disciplines. And it's really weird. I got this from an article written by a Christian, but the article referred First to LeBron James and then to Scripture, and here's what it said. Let's take Le LeBron James, for example. Uh, uh, one of the most dominant players in, NF in NBA history, no question. Some argue maybe the best player ever. His dominance, however, doesn't result just from his elite of talent alone. He keeps his body in peak condition through extremely disciplined and rigorous uh, uh, workout and diet regimen. Nearly every single day of every year, he subjects himself to grueling physical exercise, uh, stringently controlled nutrition and hydration routines. In fact, uh, this is, he spends a million and a half dollars a year subjecting himself to pain and, and, and physical things. Uh, why? Why would he do that? And here's the answer. It says because he prizes NBA championship trophies personal achievements, accolades, and records. And then it says, LeBron James knows the secret to self-discipline. That's interesting. What's the secret? Whether consciously or unconsciously, it's a secret that applies to all of us. The secret is joy. Joy. The secret is not that each exercise or self-denial gives us joy. The secret lies in the prize. LeBron James is so disciplined because he wants the prize, he wants a trophy, he wants championships. And did you know the Bible talks about this? But our prize is different, and it's so much greater. And God reveals to us this prize we can have with our lives. So check this out in 1 Corinthians if you've never gotten this. Do you not know, he's talking to all of us, that, it, that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? All right? So, so run so that you may get the prize. Live your life that you may get the prize. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable thing, a trophy, to win the award, to win the gold medal. But we run our race to receive an eternal prize, to, to literally do something much bigger, much bigger. 
So it says, so I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. And as I said, I'm like, what's that mean, disqualified? That I would cheat myself from what? From the life that God wants to give me. Don't cheat yourself from the life that God wants to give you. And the only way you're going to live the life that God wants to give you is through growing in discipline, applying these disciplines. But don't get to the end of your life and cheat yourself. Don't miss this life. All right? So, point number two, and I really want you to take this serious and think about this. What do you want to be said about your life? What prize from this day forward do you want to be said about your life? If you're a father, I hope you want to be said that someday you encountered God. Today could be your day, and you, had a, you got to a personal relationship with God, and you, you became a leader, a spiritual leader. And it changed the way you lived and what you lived for, and you became a world changer. Wow, that's something to be said. That's a prize. If you're a mother, that your kids knew that you knew the love of God, and if today's your first day, that you became a godly mother and shared this love of God with them and prayed with them and for them and introduced them to the love of God, and that became a part of your life, and you leave that legacy forever. It changes everything. For those of you whose parents aren't with us, you know the difference that this can make, or you wish you knew that they had that prize. If you have kids or you are a kid, the goal is not just to be a leader in football or a leader in cheer, cheerleading or in soccer. The goal is to be a leader for Christ, to be a leader in the world. That's the goal. And if you're a grandparent, I hope for you the prize is, I want to be the most godly example my precious grandkids ever saw. I want to grow all my days so that the older I am, the wiser I am, the more spiritual I am, and they know that I knew the love of God, and that's the legacy I leave. What prize do you want to be said about your life? <laughs> and I thought about this, and it's like, well, I remember when I walked into church, okay? When I walked into church, things weren't awesome. Uh, I weighed 345 pounds. I hated myself. I was abusive to my wife and my kids, and my wife was not living with me and was going to divorce me and already talked to an attorney. So I was hating life and hating myself and miserable. And if pastor guy's like, well, be thinking about what kind of prize you want to change the world, I'd be like, what? Change the world, bro? I'm worried about my marriage. You worry about the world. I'm worried about this over here. What are you talking about? What do you mean? but I didn't understand what God wants to do. And throughout the Bible, throughout is there's this idea of one of these gifts that God gives us. Following God is all about receiving these incredible gifts like grace and heaven and life more abundantly. But there's this other gift, and, and it's called the Holy Spirit. So point number three is this. God wants to give you. Do you understand this? God wants to give every one of you supernatural power. And supernatural love and supernatural self discipline. Now, the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, right, you, the Holy Spirit comes inside of you. Acts 1 8, you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness. If you're in Christ, the Spirit's in you. Maybe you didn't know that. Maybe you've never had the disciplines to unleash that, but it is. So then the question is, what's this spirit like? What's that mean that the spirit of God? And this verse is a game changer. And if you don't have a Bible, I hope you'll go get you a study Bible today. And you circle this verse or put a page marker in your Bible and remember this verse, memorize this verse. This should be in everybody's top 10 because when you remember this, it's going to give you incredible power to understand what God wants for you. So I want to read this out loud. All right. Um, let's read this on three. One, two, three. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. What's this spirit like inside? It's a spirit of power. God's power is inside of you. And it's a spirit of love. God's going to change the way you love everybody. And it's a spirit 
of self-discipline. He's going to help you to become more disciplined. Whoa. And, and, and we don't want you to miss that. So uh, it's so important that we understand that. God wants to give you supernatural power, supernatural love, and supernatural self. Now, who doesn't want that? <laughs> Hello? It's weird. If I said to you, um, guys, there's this new technology. Have you heard? And there's a new magic pill. <laughs> and if you take this magic pill, I promise you, it's guaranteed, it will give you supernatural power. This could change your marriage. This could change your power over addictions and all kinds of things. This supernatural power and supernatural love. This will make you love better. Love your family better. Love the world. It'll, it'll change the way you love. And it's going to give you in this incredible new potential for self-discipline. I got these magic pills. They're, they're two bucks a piece. They're out in the parking lot. Well, hopefully I would sell out, right? Now, just to be consistent, some of you said this last year. Some of you tried this in college. You thought you bought a pill like that. I'm just throwing that in there to see if you're listening, all right? But if I said there's a magic pill to give you super, you'd be like, yes! God's given you, that's, that's not real. So I hope you all know that's not real because some of us buy pills for all kinds of weird things that really don't work, all right? I, I need to stay on the message, never get off the message. But just last service, this lady came up to me and we were talking and she goes, yeah, man, I'm getting bugged by someone to go buy these pills guaranteed to help you lose weight. And I'm like, now wait a minute. If there was a pill that was guaranteed to help you lose weight, everybody would know about it. Trust me. Can we agree on that, church? Everybody would know about it. But there is a way for you to have supernatural power, more than you ever dream. And supernatural love will change the way you love everybody. It will change, change the way you love everything. And this self-discipline, a whole new discipline. And that's already living inside of you. It's God's spirit. God's already given you that, and it's through discipline that you learn to unpack that and let that out in your life. So remember when the Bible says we're new creatures. We're new creatures. We're actually now, we're like missionaries for God. It's like he sent us now. We're, we have a new life and a new purpose. Missionary means uh, missio. It comes to the word missio. It means active sending. And, and really, the Bible says if you're in Christ, you're a citizen of heaven now. That's your home. That's your forever home. We're just here for a little bit to change the world for God, to unleash this power. And God gives us three mission fields, and this will change your life to understand that these are three mission fields that God's given us where we're to live our new life, and here they are. God gives us three mission fields to practice our new power and love and self-discipline. Those mission fields are our family, our church, and the world. And here's what I want you to think about this week. I want you to think about those three mission fields and where you need to grow in discipline to be the best representative of God you can be. So when it comes to your family, from now on, when you think of your family, think of that as a mission field, all right? God placed you there. He sent you there to be his hands and feet. And this is true, all right? So where do you need to grow in discipline to help change your family? Some of you, if you have kids and you're not spending enough time with them, that's a discipline and you need to do that. If you don't know their love language, if you don't have a relationship with them, you need to have that discipline and develop that. If you're married and you're on tough times and you're not spending enough time together, you need to have the discipline to do that. If you need to go get a Christian counseling, you need to have the discipline to go do that. If you need to pray together, study the word together, you need to have the discipline to go do that. In your family, uh, where do you need more discipline. So it may be stay off Facebook, right? Or it may be my immediate family's cool, but I know I should be spending more time with my mother or my father or this relative because they don't have anybody, and that's my mission field. And God will speak to you when you're in church, and that's the Spirit of God telling you, there you go. Now go be my hands and feet. All right, the second mission field is church. Your church is a mission field. God sent you to be his hands and feet. We, we, we practice here. Where do you need more discipline? First, if, hopefully you're coming every week. If not, that's a great start. 
of more discipline. You should come every week, make it the way you roll. It's just, it's structure, it's discipline. That's what we do. But then are you coming as a mission field to serve, to change the world, to be the hands and feet of Jesus? Are you coming just to receive? Are you coming to give? It changes everything when you come to give. So hopefully that's your mission field. Where do you need more discipline? And then the world. Here's how you know you're a real follower of Christ. You understand that you're a new creature and God's spirit is inside of you. And you understand the world is your mission field. So you know if you're at Walmart and somebody needs prayer and you're like, oh, that family needs help. You don't look for the, the, the priest with the collar. You know God chose you. And you're going to go because you're God's missionary. God's called you to be his hands and feet. A mature Christian knows wherever they are, they're God's ambassador. We studied that today. So God gives us three mission fields, and I want you to think about where you need to grow in discipline. I want you to think about that this week. So right now, if you just like, well, I need to do this in my family, and I need to do this in the church, that'll change your life, and especially if you begin to look at the world as your mission field. Um, here's the last point. Here's what I know. Every single one of you, God's spirit, if you're in Christ, is inside of you. If you want God's spirit inside of you, that can happen today. And here's what I know. God wants you to be a world changer, and your spiritual growth and your ability to change the world for God will be directly proportional, it's as simple, to your spiritual disciplines. Okay? So uh, I love that Herm Edwards in that football show, and I thought, man, this is so true for following Jesus. Here's what he said. He said, man, I need to tell you this. You'll never cheat the game of football. You can't cheat the game. It'll come down to how hard we work, and that will affect the outcome of the game. You can't cheat football. It's just that's the way it is. You can't cheat the game. And when it comes to following God, you can't cheat the system. However much time you spend with God, that'll be proportional to your power. That'll be proportional to how you change in love. You can't cheat the system. It's you got to have the discipline, and it's directly proportional to what God changes in you and how much God uses you. So hopefully you're hungry. I've got to grow and change. I don't want to miss the prize. I want to make a difference in my family. I want to make a difference in the church, and I want to make a difference in the world. I get it. So I need to apply these disciplines to my life. And here's a couple starting points. Uh, disciplines to practice this week. Number one, praise God. There is power in praising God. It changes you to praise God. Happens to me all the time in church. I'll be like, um, oh, I'm tired or first service hard. I can't wake up. Man, I worked out. I should have done less. Woo, I got to get up there and preach. And we got this incredible worship band here. And we'll get up there and we'll start praising God before long. Woo, I am ready to go. Let's take the hill. Because you praise God. And every morning before you leave, you should get up and thank God and praise God. Think about the difference this will make in your witness and in your attitude. If you're, if you're just living, oh, poor me. My life's horrible. Oh, everything stinks. I'm just miserable. That's going to be a great day. Isn't that going to be a great day? Great day. Or even if you are on tough times, you wake up and you're like, you know what? Things are rough, but think about the person I used to be. Think about the difference that God has made in my life. Thank you, God, and thank you for the miracles in my family, and thank you that the worst thing that can happen to me in the world, God, is I'm going to heaven to be with you forever. Thank you, God. And if you think that way, you're like, yeah, there's power. And when you praise God, it gives you joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. So there's power in praise. Practice it every day. Number two, pray. I believe nothing great in your life will happen without prayer. Every miracle I've had, uh, getting sober, that would not have happened without prayer. Staying married would not have happened without prayer. Becoming a pastor and God doing a miracle, there's no way in the world that would have happened without prayer. we got to be praying people. It changes us. And we got to learn to pray and pray for God to use us and pray for God to help us to grow in discipline and for his spirit 
to be revealed to the world through us. So you got to pray. Pray for your family. Pray with your family. If you have kids, pray for them. If you have kids in your house, bless them every night. Pray with them. If you're married, pray with your spouse. It's a beautiful thing. You won't always be together. This is a short gift. Pray for your church. I hope you pray for your church every day. We need it. Churches are under attack. Pray for your church. Pray for the world. God will change your heart. When I came here, I was prejudiced towards everybody, and God totally changed my heart. And I got to go on a mission trip from this church to Haiti, and it just changed my life. Man. And do you know that we were supposed to take a mission trip, and the last mission trip to Haiti got canceled because things are too tough to take a mission trip there. And right now, they're in a horrible place, and it just keeps me up at night. Like, what can we do for our brothers and sisters in Haiti? There are people in this world that don't have food to eat. You need to understand that. There are people in this world that have babies and don't have healthy food to give their babies or water, pure water. And we need to be the hands and feet of Jesus, and we need to look at the world through his eyes. And the last thing is we just need to be committed to growing. God, I know your spirit is inside of me. Help me to reach my God potential. I'm going to teach the disciplines to spend time with you in prayer and in the word and pray and serving. I'm going to do whatever I can to grow so that I can be your hands and feet. God, use me up. That's the proper attitude. I want to uh, review before we close. Now, I just want to challenge you with a, a question that I hope you're really going to spend a lot of time thinking about. I hope you can agree we're just better. We're better when we're under the authority of discipline. We all should be hungry to want to grow in discipline. I hope we all leave here and want to grow in discipline. God wants to give you supernatural power and supernatural love and supernatural self. His spirit is inside of you. God wants to give you that, but it's going to come down to your discipline. You got three mission fields. Your family, that's your main mission field. And the church, it's the hope of the world. That's the bride of Christ. And the world, wherever we are, we're his ambassadors. we got to live our lives that way. And here's what I know. Um, whatever you do, whatever you do in life, it'll be directly proportional to your disciplines and to your spiritual disciplines. So I want to close with this question. Uh, what prize do you want to be set about your life? That's a tough question. I mean, especially if you're like I was when I got here, like hopeless <laughs> and just fighting to have my marriage saved. What, what prize? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you what a, how I would answer this, but it's, none of it matters except from today forward. The disciplines that I apply to my life, because it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And what really matters is what all of us do from today forward to finish strong, to win the prize but to change the world for God. When it comes to the world, I would love it to be said about me that um, I would love if my kids or, or the people would say, man, that Mike was, he really was really screwed up. <laughs> I mean bad, you should have seen him. But um, you know what? God used him to change the world. Whoa. God used him to change the world. And, and he realized what every follower of God should realize that the world was his mission field, and he tried to teach the world that. Oh, I'd love it if I could end that way. And i got to do my best to make that happen. When it comes to the church, I'd love it to be said, <laughs> that guy, <laughs> you should have, hey, he had to get dragged in here. He came for the wrong motives, but he discovered Jesus and was never the same. And he invested in the church, and he changed the church, and he did his very best to leave the church better than he found it for the next generation. I would love it if that would be part of my legacy that I did. But whatever it is, it's going to come down to our growth and spiritual disciplines. So what I want to do is have a heavy time of prayer with you right now for your response to God. Would you stand? I'd like to pray with you. If you would all just uh, bow your heads right now and be in an attitude of prayer and 
I just really want you to take one second and think about what prize do you want to be said about your life? When it comes to your family, what do you want to be said? And at the end of every service, the real question is, what, what are you going to do? How are you going to be different? What are you going to do? What disciplines do you know that you need to grow in? God, right now we pray for discipline. We pray for discipline to grow and change and have your love come out of us and have your power come out of us. We need your discipline to be all that you want us to be. May it make a huge difference in our families. I mean, I'm praying for changed legacies right now. I'm praying for changed generations, God. When it comes to the church, the church church is the hope of the world. It's, It's God's plan, and there is no plan B. This is the plan. God, this is your vessel to reach the world with your love. May we all have the attitude we got to help, we got to do our part, we, we got to be the church. God, give us discipline, give us a, a heart to lead. We are called to be leaders. Help us to, to change the church for you to never rest until everyone knows your love. And when it comes to the world, help us to grow enough spiritually to understand that, that your spirit is in us. You'll give us the words. We don't have to worry about the words. That wherever we are, we're there because we're your hands and feet. And may we be Jesus to the world. Use us up. We pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Let's all agree and say amen.